Despite a significant setback due to a tragic accident involving the Titan submersible, Guillermo Sonland, co-founder of Oceangate, remains fearless in his quest to push the boundaries of human exploration. His next ambitious goal? Something outrageous than Stockton Rush's plans to use the doomed Titan submersible as a craft for deep sea mining. Keep watching till the end of this video to see Oceangate's co-founder's new plans after the Titan submersible. Guillermo Sonlin's aspirations extend beyond the depths of the ocean. He wants a future where humans transcend their earthly confines and venture into the challenging environment of Venus, often referred to as Earth's evil twin. Despite the recent tragedy involving the Titan submersible, Sonlin remains firm in his resolve and is keen to explore uncharted territories. He stated confidently that his plan to establish a human colony on Venus is less aspirational than putting a million people on the Martian surface by 2050. This bold statement underlines Sonlin's unwavering faith in humanity's ability to innovate and overcome formidable obstacles. The idea of colonizing Venus, however, is bound to raise eyebrows, both inside and outside the space industry. Venus's harsh conditions present significant challenges for human habitation. The planet is notorious for being the hottest in the solar system, with surface temperatures capable of melting lead. Furthermore, Venus's atmosphere compromises primarily carbon dioxide, with clouds of sulfuric acid adding to its inhospitable environment. The atmospheric pressure on Venus is over 90 times that of Earth, as reported by NASA. These conditions make Venus seem an unlikely candidate for colonization. Despite the daunting conditions, Sonlin believes that certain aspects of Venus's environment could potentially support human life. He referred to a research that indicated a specific layer of the Venusian atmosphere, approximately 30 miles above the planet's surface, where humans could theoretically survive. The conditions in this particular layer are relatively less hostile, with lower temperatures and atmospheric pressure than the planet's surface. If a space station could be engineered to resist the sulfuric acid in Venus's clouds, Sonlin suggests that a floating colony could be established in the Venusian atmosphere. I think I've been driven to help make humanity a multi-planet species since I was 11 years old, Sonlin said. I had this reoccurring dream of being the commander of the first Martian colony, he added. To turn this bold vision into reality, Sonlin has co-founded a venture studio, Humans to Venus, with entrepreneur Khalid Al-Ali. This venture aims to generate innovative business concepts and startup ideas that can overcome the commercial barriers to sending humans to Venus. They aim to develop techniques to reduce the cost of space mission operations and explore ways to fund these missions without depending on governmental agencies. This approach mirrors the strategies of other space exploration companies, such as SpaceX, which has also aimed to lower costs and streamline operations in its quest to colonize Mars. The tragic Titan submersible incident is a reminder of the risks associated with pushing the boundaries of exploration. However, Sonlin believes that it is vital for humanity to continue advancing despite these challenges. In his words, forget Oceangate, forget Titan, forget Stockton, humanity could be on the verge of a big breakthrough and not take advantage of it because we, as a species, are gonna get shut down and pushed back into the status quo. While Sonlin remains optimistic about the potential for human life on Venus, experts in the field share a more cautious perspective. Andrew Coates, a professor of space physics from the University College London's Mullard Space Science Laboratory, suggests that while technically feasible, colonizing Venus by 2050 would require significant political will and financial backing. He raises the question, if political will and a lot of money going into it, then I'm sure humanity could do it. I suppose the question is, why do we want to do that? He further mentions that Venus and Mars would present highly harsh environments for humans and questions the necessity of such a mission when closer celestial bodies, like the Moon, could provide viable alternatives. Initial investigations about the disaster reveal that the nearly 7-meter submarine imploded approximately two hours into its 3,800-meter descent to the ocean floor, resulting in the instant death of all five crew members on board. Experts claim that the Titan sub had been damaged before landing in the ocean, and the rough waters gave additional damage when it was released into the Atlantic Ocean, hours before the doomed expedition. Arnie Weissman, Travel Weekly's editor-in-chief, shared his experience when he boarded the submersible. He said the conditions at sea were bumpy during the journey. I thought the sub and platform were being tossed around pretty roughly, he said. Carbon fiber is known for its effectiveness in pulling forces during deep-sea exploration while titanium can deal with crushing and pulling forces. 
In 2022, Rush said that he could lessen the submersible's weight to 9,500 kilograms using these materials. He made the submersible with lighter and cheaper materials. Retired forensic metallurgist Tim Fakey said that Titan's shape also played a significant role in its failure, comparing the sub with the Alvin, an American government research sub that completed more than 4,500 dives since 1973. It was reported that the vehicle created by General Mills Electronics Group had successfully traveled deeper than the Titan. Alvin was built as an all-titanium hull sphere and was transported by a special mothership, while the Titan was towed in rough seas using a smaller ship, the Polar Prince. The towing method caused the Titan to be damaged even before it exploded under the enormous pressure underwater. U.S. Coast Guard reportedly discovered human remains from the sub-debris. The debris they received contained presumed human remains. The Marine Board of Investigation is still analyzing pieces of evidence. Investigators from the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, the French Marine Casualties Investigation Board, and the UK Marine Accident Investigation Branch are also working closely on the probe. OceanGate Expeditions was repeatedly warned of possible catastrophic safety problems on how the submersible was developed. A local deep-sea engineer from California also says Rush ignored their early warnings about the sub's unsafe materials. We told him, someone is going to be killed in this thing and you've got to not do it, Liz Taylor, president of DOER Marine Operations said. OceanGate CEO met with Taylor in 2015 while he was building the Titan submersible. Stockton felt like he was pushing the edge. He wanted to push the envelope, use some new materials, she said. OceanGate received another warning in 2018 from the Marine Technology Society, backing up Taylor's warnings, saying that the company should submit its prototype to tests under an expert third party before launching to ensure the safety of the passengers. But Rush declined to follow them and complained about the regulations. He said, There hasn't been an injury in the commercial sub-industry in over 35 years. It's obscenely safe because they have all these regulations. But it also hasn't innovated or grown because they have all these regulations. Carl Stanley, Rush's friend and a sub-expert, said that he heard cracking sounds during a dive on the Titan and told Rush to conduct extensive testing on the carbon fiber hole. But Rush told him to keep your opinions to yourself while adding, I hope you of all people will think twice before expressing opinions on subjects in which you are not fully versed. Rob McCallum, OceanGate's project associate, received a similar response when he expressed his concerns to Rush. But as usual, Rush didn't take it well and said, we have heard the baseless cries of you are going to kill someone way too often. I take this as a serious personal insult. The CEO threatened McCallum with litigation if he continued criticizing his company to other people. Despite the skepticism surrounding Rush's decision to continue operating the Titan as it is, David Pogue, a CBS reporter who wrote on OceanGate Submersible in 2022, believes that Rush is not a con man, but was passionate about what he was doing and truly believed in it. But I don't think Rush was a con man. He genuinely believed in his design, enough to trust it with his own life many times over, he said. Despite the OceanGate's tragic end, warnings, and skepticism of Guillermo Sonlin's new plans, it seems that no one will be able to stop the man from reaching the impossible. I think over time, Stockton just realized that the only way uh, we were going to be able to help humanity unlock the secrets of the ocean was to get past the regulations and just prove that it could be done uh, as safely as possible. So, do you think Sonlin's plan to colonize Venus will really happen? Do you also agree that we should keep exploring beyond our limitations to discover more than we know today, even if it costs our life? Join the conversation and let us know in the comments below. Thanks!